Number one, teachers need to, to know how to use whatever uh, presentation material they want to use. If you're going to use a board, you need to know how to use a board. You, you may think I'm crazy. Yes, well, I just write on the board. Well, no, it's not that simple. You need to know how to use a board. And if it's an interactive whiteboard you're using, you need to know how to use an interactive whiteboard. If it's a projector with a computer, you need to know how to, or vice versa, you need to know how to use it. Number two, you need to have a clear view about what correction is for. The more I think about it, and I've been thinking about it a lot recently, I don't think you can leave correction to be done just by instinct. It's something you need to think about. Kind of counterintuitive techniques spring to mind, like the idea of stepping back and just allowing things to happen, which is a kind of non-technique. In terms of actual technique techniques, I really like dictation techniques, especially dictogloss. Um, and I love the idea of sort of approximate dictation activities where you start with a text which somebody speaks um, and then people note down and then they make it into a new text and then they maybe read that out and it's kind of moving language around the room and it's a very holistic technique because it basically tests all the skills at the same time. You know, somebody's speaking, somebody's listening, they're writing and they're reading what they've written then they're changing it around. Um, so that's, that's an area that I think is sometimes underused. What I want to talk about is young learner teachers and a tip or a technique for young learner teachers that all young learner teachers should think about and that is that you are entitled to be the teacher in a young learner classroom. Uh, you do need to play games, you do need to have fun but you really do need to be the adult in the room and you need to be the grown up and the teacher and that involves really thinking about your classroom management and how you're going to get that class working effectively and taking the time to concentrate on that and not just focus on teaching the language but actually developing their behaviour, their attitude and their engagement with, with learning as a whole, not just English. I a lot myself in storytelling um, and I think it can be a really powerful way to teach. One I, I use quite a lot is a story about how I've got a scar on my arm here and I nearly lost my arm um, and I've used this story a lot of times and it's a story of how I got my scar, what happened. And what I've done with it each time is to tell the story and people are kind of, ooh, really, ooh, zero, ooh, ooh, ooh. And then get them to analyse the, the language I used in the telling of the story. Um, and then get the students telling their own stories, but using the same language structure. And in fact, there are, there are a lot of good books on this subject as well. There's a man called Andrew Wright, who wrote a number of books about storytelling, storytelling for children, for adults, for different age groups. Um, Mario Rimbalukri uh, wrote a book a long time ago called Once Upon a Time. Uh, which you remember, of course, uh, and there's some lovely ideas in there for storytelling. So I remember the best advice I was given very early on when I started teaching. Some, uh, my director of studies was observing me, and I, you know, the lesson I thought had gone very well and fast-paced, and the students were all involved. And he said to me afterwards, "But it was good. But who was asking all the questions?" I said, "Well, actually, I was." He said, "Well, maybe some of the." questions could be asked by the students and that completely changed the way I started teaching. I had students asking each other questions and it was amazing, amazing effect on my teaching. So I would say, yes, one piece of advice, get the students to ask the questions.